Once again, well, it's a pleasure having you on Sahara TV. Pastor Dele to me. It's a pleasure to be here. Many Nigerians have actually condemned the recent killings of a student at the College of Education, Sakwatu. We've got reactions even from the presidency themselves uh, quite lately yesterday, uh, condemning the action and uh, calling for approval. Let's get your reaction first uh, to the killings and is the presidential response asking for a probe enough? First thing first, I don't do reactions. I do responses. Reactions are largely almost always in a jack. The news of Deborah's gruesome mother had me <laughs> silenced, shocked into silence actually. Not because the killing is new in Nigeria. Killing has, after all, killings have become commonplace in our country. Human life does not really appear to matter so much anymore so that but the circumstances the the deeper meanings of the killings the predictable reactions the predictable condemnations all predictable all predictable I wasn't, I was shocked into silence. And um, you actually, usually I would have picked up my laptop or some writing device and I would have written out of my pain. But Nigeria has become a place that constantly inflicts pain. So I found that when I write, what used to be therapeutic, which would have helped me to at least get rid of the pain, perhaps by writing it down, is no longer a therapy. Writing has become a painful exercise because writing consecrates the mind. It forces you to think through what you're putting down. Writing refines your thinking. It forces you to think. You think about it when you're writing it down. So I, I couldn't write about the Deborah thing, which is what I would have done four, five, six years ago. But now I've been so numbed by the pains that I couldn't write about it. And now you're asking, I will share my thoughts. The reality of the Nigerian situation is that there are several nations trapped within Nigeria. There is a nation in Nigeria that looks increasingly to the western part of the world that wants to run the space race, that is interested in becoming a citizen of the global village. There is a, that, that nation exists in Nigeria. It's largely a young population, most of it in the southern part of Nigeria. But the reality that we must embrace in this Nigerian enterprise is that a very significant part of our country also thinks it is okay to murder persons the way Deborah was murdered. Because if that wasn't so, Atiku wouldn't have felt himself obliged to be deleting the post earlier made in his name in condemnation of madness. Because frankly, what happened to her could only have happened in a mad place. It has, there is no place for a country that should be heading towards the moon, the Mars, thinking about becoming part of a, of a global village, raising increasingly on the road to Kabul. And it is significant that Nigeria was one of the few countries that will hand money to the Taliban. 
So it tells you that the president of your country is very comfortable with things like this happening, regardless of the condemnations. But let's now speak to the specifics of it, which is part of why I say that I am tired of the predictable reactions, the condemnations. They are almost, you can actually script them. We've heard them all before. It happened in Kano, and the Attorney General eventually did not prosecute anybody. So this one that is happening in um, Sakoto as well, they've issued the usual condemnations. But there are videos. Persons are easily identifiable. I will take those condemnations seriously when persons are rightly arrested, prosecuted, and then allowed to face the full rot of the law. The police command has actually said that they have arrested two suspects in relation to... Which is a start. It is a start. But suspects were also arrested in Kano. And the suspects that were arrested in Kano were never tried. You see, let's understand that in as much as those of us who wish to run this race into becoming part of a global village might decry what happened to Deborah. For a large part of this country, that is completely normal and acceptable. If it wasn't so, you see, we need to, there is something, but isn't that abnormal? No, 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 no. That kind of thinking, gets you to conclude that Buhari is a failure. If you think what just happened to Deborah is abnormal, you probably also think that Buhari is a failure. But you must begin to understand that some of these definitions are subjective. You need to first of all understand what were Buhari's strategic objective on assumption of power. He has achieved the strategic objectives. He's modernized the entire echelons of Nigeria. He has popularized everyone else. He has institutionalized impunity. He has done what he came to do. So for those <laughs> who wanted Buhari in power, Buhari has been a resounding success. So when you talk about abnormality in terms of what happened to Deborah, then you are then speaking from your own subjective understanding of what constitutes normalcy. If a people are interested in raising towards Kabul, if the Taliban are those seen as the model, surely the normalization of the insanity where a voice note that clearly establishes no blasphemy would be the basis for the murder of somebody who should be a citizen but isn't. And when you consider this also within the context of the fact that there is a sitting minister in the federal cabinet who is in charge of very sensitive information related to all Nigerians, the Minister for Communication, Pantami, Isa Pantami, was similarly complicit in the murder of another Nigerian in his own days in the university. So if people can see someone of his status in the federal cabinet occupying such a sensitive position, why should they not consider the murder of a person who is not treated as a citizen as a stepping stone to a future ministerial seat. So when you speak to abnormalcy and normalcy, it is critical that you also look beyond the boundaries of your own prisms of what constitutes normalcy and abnormalcy. Earlier you mentioned uh, you, in your statement, you talked about blasphemy. I mean, the girl, yeah. Deborah, was, I mean, alleged to have blasphemed against the, the, uh, the prophet or the religion itself. Uh, you were a legal practitioner. 
does Nigeria have laws, blasphemy laws, in the, in the constitution, so in our national laws, and what should have been done under normal circumstances? You, you see, the tragedy of Nigeria is that we speak of law as though it were some abstract. The reality is that the law is real. In a place ruled by law, you will know that the law rules. Nigeria is not ruled by laws. Nigeria is ruled by impunity. What you are seeing today is the schizophrenia that has attended the Nigerian state since it was hijacked in the second coup and it has been unilaterally restructured in the image of those who believe that what is happening to us, what happened to Deborah, is completely normal. Now, let's understand this. Nigeria proclaims itself a secular state by virtue of the fraudulent constitution known as Decree 24 of 1999. Even though it proclaims itself a secular state, there are states in northern Nigeria who are oblivious of the history of our coming together and who are blissfully unaware of the fact that even Amadou Bello refrained from imposing the full Sharia and he found accommodation for the northern minorities, the non-Muslims, and adopted the penal code in place of Sharia. But that pedophile in Zamfara weaponized Islam as an antidote to Obasanjo's onslaught in the lead up to the, 2020, uh, the 2003 election. And when he weaponized Islam, because that was the only way he could survive Obasanjo's onslaught, other governors in northern Nigeria began to fall over themselves, copying what he was doing. I'm talking about Yerima. That was the beginning of what Obasanjo blithely referred to as political Sharia. His political ambitions, his ego, his inability to understand that there are consequences to actions led him to refrain from cracking down on the beginnings of what later became Boko Haram, the Iswap, and all the many extremes that were enabled because of the extra constitutional steps taken by the likes of Yerima, who should rightly have been tried for treason because they acted extra constitutionally. So when you have a situation, sharia. yes, Sharia has always been accommodated in recognition of the sizable Muslim population of Nigeria, but it was always the civil laws of Sharia that governs inheritance, marriage, testacy. Those were the areas covered, nothing like cutting off Jangebe's hand for stealing a cow. If they were going to be cutting off body parts for stealing anything, that man should, Yerima should not have any body part left any longer, but he was the one who was busy, and this, that was the beginning of this madness. So the reality is that when you consider the fact that Islam has been weaponized and turned into a political it's always been political because even the feudalism you see in northern Nigeria is intricately woven into politics and religion. If you are the head of the Umar, if you are the Emir, that presupposes that you are the head of the faithful. So it, it was tied to Islam. The Sultan purports to be the head of the entirety of Nigerian Muslims, even those who are not Islamized by jihad my own people in, the, in Yoruba land. So you find that this fabric of tolerance for insanity has been woven because of the politicization of Islam, the need to administer impunity, which is what governs Nigeria. So if we are talking about law, understand quickly, 
that this is not about laws because Nigeria really has never been governed by law, at least not since 1966, not since the second coup happened, not since it has begun its journey to Islamization and Fulanization, unilaterally so, without consultation with any other person. So this is not about laws. Nigeria is not ruled by laws. Nigeria is ruled by impunity. Because even if this woman, even if there were to be a law dealing with blasphemy, is it the mob that would administer that? I read some twat saying somewhere that some people were equally burnt in Lagos. Does that normalize that? The reality is that madness is madness, wherever it might have occurred. This is the one that has occurred to the knowledge of all of us. We must be able to not selectively feel outrage, but refuse to normalize these madnesses because this is truly insane.